Hello, my name's Zekel O'Harrod, and this is the Future Fiction Factory. And today we are going to install Phi 3 on this computer, or at least I'm going to show you how to do that. And uh, this is a local model that will be run on LM Studio. Now I've been wanting to play around with Phi 3 locally for quite a while. So let's jump right in. The first thing you need to know is that right here, there is a, when you click on the search tab uh, right here in the upper left-hand corner and you click on search, it will give you a large array of models that, uh, that we want to use. I was searching for llama. What I'm going to do now is we're going to search for something else. As you can see down here, I've already downloaded llama 3.8 billion parameter instruct phi 3 mini which i think they have a phi 3 medium we can even look that up it looks like phi 3 is not available uh in the form of the uh middle sized version of it i'm looking up oh, there it is there it is right over there let me see here the broke phi 3 mini Llama, this is on the left-hand side of your screen. Here's a 5.3 medium, and we'll look at what these right here, how big these get. I'm going to take, let's go for this one right here. Now you can see that I have the ability right here to download this one. It's 5.3 medium 4K instruct IQ2 underscore m dot g g u f and that's the one i'm going to download that is the third version the the second version of phi 3 that i have i have a mini version and i now i have a instruct version so we're going to wait for that to download and while that's downloading i'm going to show you how you can use these local language models. Now, if you look right over in the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see there's a button for AI chat. So you have search, you have home, search, and then AI chat, playground, and local server, and the models that you have inside of there. This is gonna take quite a while to download, so we're gonna play around with the chat over here. I'm going to new chat. You'll see that there is a new chat right here. I'm going to minimize that so that you can see the entire screen. There's a new chat right here. I want to set it up completely and load this model into this particular chat. I'm going to pick Phi 3. And as you can see, it's actually loading it in and telling me exactly how much CPU I'm using and the RAM usage, which is actually very important on a small little computer like this. I'm going to create a system prompt. Uh, we're going to have it help us with some writing today. How about that? You are a incredibly helpful writing assistant. Your knowledge is vast in science fiction, and you are the equivalent of a New York editor of science fiction. To begin crafting an engaging, captivating science fiction system prompt, let's start by narrowing down your key elements and, and setting the stage for your unique narrative. Here are some essential steps you can follow. Determine your core concept theme. This is the foundation of your story, and so on and so forth. I can stop this generation if I wanted to. By way of a small 3-inch by 3-inch emerald cube called the jump box normally been but she doesn't know that yet close parentheses what i want is the scene of her waking up and realizing that she's in a completely different place she notices that there is two moons and that's when she realizes that she's on a different planet she finds the jump box very close to her and worries about picking it up because she's worried that it will transport her to yet another planet if she touches it again but she finally reluctantly picks it up and she becomes a lot calmer when she realizes that it's not going to just drop her on a different planet 
What I want you to do is write a scene brief that would explain how to execute the scene. Harsh, arid de dune desert landscape with imposing mountain-like dunes under two moons in the sky. Nearby is a small emerald cube known as Jump Box. Objective, to create a vivid, suspenseful scene where Sergeant Major, I think she should be a master sergeant. Scene brief. Open the scene, waking up. Describe the sensations as Susan. This is pretty good. Scene brief, opening scene. Process the surreal nature of her situation by acknowledging the drastic differences from Earth, the intense heat, harsh sands resembling mountains and dunes, and the unusual sky filled with two moons instead of one. The realization should be gradual but striking as she processes these observations while still being disoriented. Cliffhanger. As Susan contemplates what comes next after discovering the jump box, a sudden movement or disturbance catches her attention. An unseen danger looms nearby in the vast dunes of this alien world. Leave readers wondering about the implications and potential threats that await Major McKay as she begins to comprehend the scope of her predicament fully. The scene brief should serve as a guide. Not bad, not bad. Hospitable. These are all very interesting. To craft an intricate and engaging narrative that captures Susan McKay's awakening from an uh, on an unfamiliar planet while highlighting her military background. Did it say what she's wearing? I also need you to make sure you describe what she's wearing, how she's going to be feeling through this entire endeavor so that the large language model can write this stuff out appropriately. There should also be something about how eerie it is. There should also be something in there about how eerie it is that the two different moons are casting two different shadows. Setting, a desolate, otherworldly dune desert landscape filled with towering sand formations that loom over her. Mimicking mountains under a dual lunar system's glow. The eerie atmosphere is enhanced by the unique shadow play cast upon these alien dunes by two distinct moons in the sky. Characterization and sensory details. Master Sergeant Major. That's a lot of titles. Susan McKay wakes up wearing her standard military issue hazmat suit, complete with a tactical utility belt and high visibility gear designed to protect her from potential extraterrestrial environments while preserving her life in an alien scenario. These details such as the feel of touching equipment, that's really nice. That's really nice. Even though she shouldn't necessarily have a tactical vest because she was just supposed to be inside of a laboratory she wasn't supposed to actually go anywhere oh yep it's dying it's 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 spooling let's see if it does it this time major she's just a major now <laughs> as major mckay major 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 a vast and seemingly lifeless expanse of desert landscapes now the whole idea is that we will take this we will feed it back into itself with maybe the medium model this should give us the ability to write this scene out completely so we will see and we'll probably feed it into chat gpt or something like that in order to see if it will write the scene the way we want it. And it's spiraling out of control again. We're gonna go with this one. Why don't we? Now let's take it and drop it into GPT-4 and see if it will just write the scene without any other prompts. The two moons cast a spectral glow over the alien desert with light dancing on the towering sand dunes that stretched infinitely in all directions. The sand, a hue between burnt umber and bronze, seemed to possess a life of its own, shifting and swirling in the gentle breeze. Master Sergeant Susan McKay woke with a start, 
her senses immediately on high alert. Her hazmat suit, designed for extraterrestrial environments, felt oddly heavy as she pushed herself to a seated position. Every muscle in her body ached, a reminder of the recent turmoil that had brought her. Not bad. McKay's training kicked in as she took stock of her surroundings. Not bad. Okay, so now we have come to the inevitable conclusion and uh, it's still writing out some stuff over here and basically spiraling out of control. So I'm gonna stop this generation. That language model is completed and we can switch over to a different language model now, which seems to be using less RAM than the Mini did. I wonder if it's about the actual uh, fine tuning of this model that happened. It might be. It is taking longer for it to load, which is interesting. Take this and get rid of it uh, right there. And then I'm going to regenerate and see if it can actually grasp onto it with the medium model, which it should do. Awakening an unfamiliar planet while emphasizing her military background, attire, and sensory details in this eerie environment where shadows cast by two moons create a mesmerizing effect. All right, let's see. Awakening scene, detailed observation, interaction with the jump box, and there was no spiraling whatsoever. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one and we're going to see if it will write a better, more comprehensive version of this with this information. Paste and uh, see if it writes it a little bit better. This is a scene brief. Remember, it's a scene brief that helps it. It looks pretty good. The barren landscape stretched out before her, dominated by... Hmm, that should be switched around. Susan McKay woke up with a start is what it should say. Her senses immediate... And then it should say the barren landscape stretched out before her, dominated by towering sand dunes that rose like mountains under the pale light of two moons. Their ghostly glow cast dual shadows, creating a mesmerizing yet eerie effect on the alien terrain. McKay pushed herself up, the fine grains of sand sifting under her gloved hands. Her eyes, sharp and focused, scanned the surroundings. There it is. We have ourselves a scene brief that we created locally. And if we wanted to, we could take this exact same scene brief Start a new chat. Huh. You misunderstand. I want you to write it out as a narrative. Write out the scene brief that you've been given as a narrative. Do not give it a setting or an objective or any of that stuff. Actually create the prose. That's more like it. Yeah, it's not actually doing a great job of writing this, but that's okay. It just gives you a good example of how you can use any language model you want locally, as long as you have the room to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Ikel O'Hara. This has been the Future Fiction Factory. This is a video on Phi 3 locally. I hope you enjoyed this look behind the scene of how you can create things on a boat if you want to, or anywhere. This is one of the main reasons why I love LM Studio, is that you can take your large language models with you. All right. Like, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video.